and welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video. You know what they say, never judge a book by its cover. Well, I did that once, and I was super happy I did. Wanted to share that story with you. When I was young, a couple of friends of mine were huge, avid readers. They would constantly want to go into the bookstore every couple of days to find whatever the latest is from one of their favorite authors. And I would head into the store with them and hang around the science fiction section because that's kind of my area that I like. And I always saw this one book on the shelf that just struck me as very um, remarkable. And that was this book right here. Retief's War by Keith Lawmer. Uh, I mean, look at that cover. It just There's something about it. Very James Bond in space. And uh, I always saw it there, but I thought, nope, 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 the saying goes, never judge a book by its cover. I better not buy that. But after about, I don't know, six or seven times seeing it sitting there, eventually I thought, eh, what's a couple of bucks? And sure, let's, let's go against the grain. Let's judge a book by its cover. And I'm super happy I did because the Retief series is awesome. It's hilarious. It's, it is basically James Bond in space. Uh, Retief, uh, James Retief, works for the Corps Diplomatique Terrestrienne, or the CDT. And in fact, this, uh, this particular story is in fact called Retief of the CDT. And he's uh, the galaxy's first two-fisted diplomat. He goes to different planets, he has uh, different adventures involving the alien races he runs into, and hilarity abounds. He deals with a lot of bureaucracy. It's a strange kind of a series. Like, it's it's not action, per se. There's some exciting moments in it, but it's mostly diplomacy. Like, it's space politics with wacky alien characters and uh, bureaucrats who want to do everything they can to stop progress from happening. And it's just, it's hilarious. Um, and these are fairly old, these books. Uh, Keith Lawmer wrote these uh, starting in 1960 with this one. Retief, Diplomat at Arms, which actually appeared in uh, the science fiction magazine. And um, apparently Keith Lawmer himself did spend some time in the U.S. Foreign Service. He actually was uh, an attaché in Burma, apparently. So these are clearly books that are kind of echoing some of his crazy experiences with dealing with frustrating politics... But uh, he set them all in space, and oh, they're just, they're so good. I was really glad I picked up that one book. Um, now, there's a, a kind of an interesting recurring theme with the story. Um, he's often running into these villains, this race of five-eyed uh, little monster alien guys. I'm going to describe them later, because that was a, there's an interesting connection to that. I want to get to that later. But... <clears throat> In doing my research, I found out that uh, Keith Lommer had actually no real connection for where he came up with the name Retief. Uh, he was quoted once as saying that uh, he thought of various place names such as Tenerife and Re Rekif, R-E-C-I-F-E, -E. not sure where, that's, where that is. Uh, and finally, Retief popped into my mind. So that's, that's where the name is from. Uh, apparently it's... Uh, a fairly big uh, surname in South Africa, but Keith Lommer hadn't apparently really thought of uh, any connection there. Keith Lommer is a dark-haired fella, and in his imagining of the characters, he'd always thought of Retief looking a bit, you know, like himself. Uh, dark-haired, uh, this guy almost looks a bit like James Belushi, but anyway. But what I thought was interesting is the advertising campaign always seemed to go for a, a blonde Retief. And that, that was apparently a big surprise for Keith Lommer himself. But that's the, the image that, st that uh, stuck. And that's why we ended up with a blonde Retief. And another thing about the look of Retief. Doesn't he look like someone we know? Isn't there an actor that's kind of got similar features? I always thought to myself, you know, if they were to cast actors to play Retief in a movie, who would they be? And back in the day, I thought, maybe Corbin Burnson. Yeah, he kind of looks like him. Or Charles Dance. Yeah. Uh, in doing my research for Retief, guess what I found out? You know who the model was for some of these paintings? Corbin Burnson.
Now, these little five-eyed alien fellas. I think there must be a there must be a word for this, but in in the story, uh, these characters. I'm gonna I'm gonna find the page where it talks about them. Okay, so just going with a page at random. There's the name of that race there. G R O A C I. How do you pronounce that? Uh, this is one of those experiences I often get in books where the writer comes up with a name, but how do you actually say that? So I thought, well, G R O A C I. Uh, for whatever reason, that sounds Italian to me, so I thought they were the Groacci. And that was. What I ended up calling them, as I always read it in my in the books, these are the Groachi. Um, but there is a particular book, I'm not sure which one it is here, where Retief runs into a character who actually talks about these beings, and he calls them the Gross Eyes, which, you look at them, yeah, they're kind of gross-looking creatures. And that's when I suddenly thought, oh, is that how you pronounce G-R-O-A-C-I? Is Grossi? Gro Grossi? Grassy? Um, anyway, so I'm sure there's a there's a term for that phenomenon where you have called it something in your head all your life and now suddenly you have it called something else. So I just decided, nope, bugger it. I'm calling them the, the Groachi. So you'll notice there's a similarity to all of the art on the cover of these books. Uh, most of them were done by Wayne Douglas Barlow, who has a really distinctive look. Uh, his aliens have a, have a very clear appearance to them. That's not Barlow, that's not Barlow, this one is. Very um, clearly eye-catching, because it made me buy this book. Uh, did some research on Wayne Douglas Barlow. He actually did this fantastic book, Barlow's Guide to Extraterrestrials, where he covers all kinds of aliens from different bits of literature. Fantastic artist. Really, really like his stuff. That's Wayne W. Barlow. Now, this book, which is the very first Retief story, Diplomat at Arms, this cover was done by Larry Elmore, who is actually one of my favorite artists for Dungeons and Dragons. He did many of the module covers and rule books, and yeah, love Larry Elmore. He also did the covers and paintings for Star Frontiers, which is a, a series of uh, the role-playing games I'm going to be talking about in future. But back to Diplomat at Arms. I was looking up Larry Elmore, ooh, this is about 10 years ago now? and went to uh, Elmore's website, and he actually had this original painting for sale. And I thought, ooh, I'm tempted to have an actual piece of Larry Elmore art hanging in my home, and it's Retief, but it was uh, something like $10,000. I thought, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not uh, that much of a fan. Much as I like his stuff, I can't afford that for a painting, but not bad for an original. Anyway, so yes, there is Retief. Fantastic series, really enjoyed these books. Highly recommend them. Uh, I, I don't know if this would ever happen again in the in the world of ebooks. I don't know, do people even see covers and decide to try them out? Uh, who knows, but back when it was uh, good old paperback, I stumbled across this series strictly because I judged a book by its cover and I never looked back. It was a, a really good experience. So, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.